everyone. Um, we are excited to talk to you about the way we use LARP in our conflict transformation trainings at Austin Community College. Um, I have my name is Leila Taragi. I'm a program coordinator for the Peace and Conflict Studies Center at Austin Community College, and I have the distinct pleasure of um, speaking with you alongside my colleagues Charlotte Gulluck and Shireen Khosrapour. Um, to begin with, we want to just give you a brief overview of um, of our conflict transformation series, the kind of concepts we're engaging with. So. We break this training into two levels and the focus of CTA level one is to provide a high level of um, or to provide high level conflict conflict transformation theory um, that in in each session focuses on one to three skills that we want our participants to be able to practice and discuss. Um, major topics and themes we explore include conflict styles, positions, interests, emotions, needs, etc. Um, reflective listening, I statements, uh, a discussion of the different types of power, different types of violence, different types of um, isms that relate to our individual identities. And we also uh, conclude with a discussion of worldview, culture, perception checking, and cognitive dissonance. In level two, we um, take all of that, all of those concepts, um, and we, we return to them, um, but we use role playing uh, to kind of have an embodied experience of um, trying to understand the different options we have um, when engaged in conflict. So we provide a basic scenarios or situations and characters that participants can quickly embody. Um, we use the embodied experience as a springboard for um, debrief and reflection. We allow participants to practice different ways of experiencing and responding to conflict through the various scenarios we, um, we develop. And this helps uh, our participants um, develop their own sense of agency. It helps them discover that they have choices in conflict situations, as well as tools that they can use to transform a conflict. Um, and we believe strongly that practice makes competent. Uh, we talk a lot with our participants about how, while it may feel deeply uncomfortable to begin with, moving from awkward engagement um, to a, a more fluid skill set uh, is, is what comes out of, of this role playing practice. Um, so why role play? I've talked about that a little bit already. Again, practice makes competence. Um, and the experience and then like the debrief and the reflection allows for a, a deeper opportunity to learn. Um, as well as the recognition that character and fiction can give us personal distance and allow us to hopefully have fun while we're doing some of this together. Um, and each scenario that we develop, we kind of roll through these five basic steps. Um, we explain the scene to our participants and then we assign roles and names. Typically we're asking for volunteers. We're not, uh, you know, telling people who they are or who they must be. Um, and then we, in order to help them develop a sense of their character, we ask them hot seat questions that they are answering aloud for the entire group who's engaged in the role play as well as um, observers. And then um, we play the scene. And after that, we have an opportunity again for debrief and questions um, and sharing. And so uh, before we engage or ask our participants to go through these five steps, we tend to also um, take time to demo the scene for participants so they get a sense of, of what they're about to experience. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Shireen, I believe. Oh no, sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you so much, Layla. So um, just to pick up a little bit on what Layla was speaking about and um, to kind of give you some of the insights that we have learned from someone teaching us how this can operate. And sure, many of you already know this, but 
Um, bleed is when the emotions that are evoked in a role-playing scene kind of lead over to our real life identities and situations and power struggle struggles. Um, it's totally normal to have bleed in, in role-playing and even desirable in role-playing. Learning how to sit in discomfort is the goal. And that kind of fits into our model of conflict transformation versus conflict resolution as that how do we transform things I means sometimes we have to give things the time and discomfort that they need. And um, we want the tension to remain high in these scenarios rather than de-escalating de immediately. And that's very challenging for people because we tend to not want to be in confrontation or step away from it. And so we encourage um, our participants to stay in the tension. And that can also make it challenging when real life emotions are engaged. Um, and as Layla said, practice makes confident, competent. Um, we are practicing how to respond when we may be emotionally activated or overwhelmed. And when bleed does happen, we do need to process it. And one of the reasons that's really important to talk about um, bleed in the context of conflict transformation is that um, since we're doing this kind of work, um, role play work around conflict, we need to have the safeguards in place so that participants feel safe because of the content of what we're trying to, the skills that we're trying to give people. Next slide, please. So what is challenging about using role play in this context? So making sure that you have the right um, scenarios that are grounded in work situations that are concise, relatable is, can be a challenge. You may need to help um, participants embody their character via the hot seat questions. And sometimes people can be very reluctant to step into their characters. And so as a facilitator, helping people get to a place of safety and being able to um, use imagination to step into that role. Um, you may need to ask participants who are not taking very up very much space to monologue. So essentially asking them, being willing to step into a situation and asking a participant who is being rather quiet, like what's on your mind right now? And, and as facilitators having the, the courage to step forward and the facility to draw people out when they're not necessarily engaging right away. And um, one of your, <clears throat> the goals, uh, is to keep the tension high, like I said, and this can be uncomfortable for facilitators in addition to participants. And um, reminding people that if they are not having a role to play in the specific scene that's being played, that the act of observing is really powerful, that we're learning when we're watching, we don't necessarily have to be in the role play to gain some of the skills and insights that role play in this context can give us. Um, and then making sure that we're keeping participants safe and um, making sure that we have some safeguards and in place uh, to talk to them about and with that they can draw upon. And um, for us, we have had counselors available during our sessions and that has been very helpful, but each individual organization will need to find their own safeguards. And then uh, now I will hand it over to Sharin. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about what's challenging about using role play in the context of conflict transformation training as a participant. For some of our participants, this is delightful. They're really excited about it. But for most of them, it's a um, it's a new experience and they feel um, very awkward about engaging with it. Plus, everybody who joins us is working in the same college. Um, so some of them know each other, there is a little bit of risk playing, um, but you know, a level of discomfort is okay, and as uh, my colleagues have already talked about, is something that makes this experience more useful as a learning tool. Um, and uh, it can all particularly be uncomfortable when people are asked to embody roles where the power uh, embedded in the role is different from the positional power that they find themselves in at the college in their roles uh, at work, um, or when they're asked to play uh, in a particular conflict style, like a competitive conflict style, when their natural inclination might, might be more a collaborative style or a, a compromising style. Um, again, 
uh, that, that it's the discomfort that can help them grow, but it makes the role of the facilitator really important in keeping people um, safe and engaged so they will be um, more likely to take risks. Um, bleed can happen really, really fast. Um, we experienced this, I experienced this uh, myself when we had a presentation as a team at an international seminar and we demoed a um, role uh, we, uh, a, a role play um, one of my colleagues became the facilitator i was one of the players and one we asked for a volunteer from the participants in that um, workshop to to join and in less than two minutes um, bleed occurred and she she got very upset very emotional and cried um, so we want to make sure that um, we allow enough time. Uh, we ended up spending the rest of our time at that particular seminar um, de debriefing that particular situation, um, but definitely allow a lot of time for that. Um, and we need to remind participants when they play it hard um, that we are here to help each other um, be collaborative um, in these scenes. Sometimes when people are playing in a conflict, they very quickly get very um, attached to their position and they will not move at all. So being prepared to, um, as a facilitator, to, to um, suggest for people to play it softer is a, um, is a useful thing. Next slide, please. So, um, I want to leave you with some feedback from our participants in the last time we did session level two of the workshop. Um, role playing is immensely useful in understanding other perspectives and conflict styles. I didn't think I'd be into role play, but it was actually fun. That's what we love to hear. Role playing was tough, but useful. Um, so we were all of us uh, presenting to you today. We were we came from outside the world of LARPing. Uh, we had an awesome uh, expert in role play who helped bring us up to speed to the point where we could facilitate these sessions. Um, and uh, we found it really useful and uh, are excited about continuing and learning more. Thank you.